to you once again my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus I greet you in that name that's above every other name at the name of Jesus Christ every knee bows every tongue confesses because he the Lord Jesus he is Lord he's above it all and in him we live we move we have our being we exist in incredible 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 times right now and, um, you know, it's something that none of us should be weary of, even though it can be difficult and troubling, but all of us should be aware of, because this is not like things have been, and it's not going to be, uh, things will not go back to what they were, all right? <laughs> so, so the die is cast. You're never going to get that shirt that same color again. It's gone. What was is no longer there. Now we're going into something else. Now we're in what is. So the instruction throughout has always been to ride the wave. Keep your eyes on Jesus. To be aware but not distracted. You know, I, I, I boy, I tell you, that's there's, a, there's one for you that God gave us early that has really been put to the test even recently. Um, in my own life to be aware but not distracted versus what the world wants to do which is to get you distracted to get your mind off of Christ and on the things going on around you to get you perplexed with all that you see to get you looking at the waves tossing to and fro and everything else happening and going on and to get you all wrapped up in that and then out of that place of just watching it all swirl just like Peter you start to sink with everything else going on you start to sink and that's not what God wants for us because he's put the miracle power of the Lord Jesus Christ inside of us so that we can walk on the water so that we can live in the miracle so that we can live and not die you know we've been destined to live and not die we've been destined to not taste death the second death you know, all of us appointed unto every man is a time to die, and after that, the judgment. So all of us pass through here, but we do not taste of the second death. You know, and, and for us to live as Christ and to die as gain, to go through the first one, big deal. We get blessed. For us to check out of here, oh my gosh, thank God for that whenever that happens, because that's it, we're done. And if you check out of here and your soul is intact and you're walking with Christ and you're on the path with Him, praise God. Because that's it. You're done. You transition from this into the next. And what here was worth holding on to? What here was worth um, another round? Haven't you seen it? <laughs> you know, what Jesus said. He said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? Forfeit who you are. Forfeit the core of your being. Forfeit that which was made in the image and likeness of the living God. To give that up for something temporal. <clears throat> to give that up for something um, just transitional. I mean, from an eternal standpoint, everybody from an eternal standpoint would say, of course, of course, why would you ever do that? But in the moment, in the matrix, in this place, at such a time as this, with all the things going on and the difficulties that are there and the struggles that people have to make decisions and make choices amidst uh, extremely challenging circumstances some people just wanting to make the pain stop you know wanting just to get off 
the ride looking for some place of safety, some place where they won't get hurt anymore. So you can you can see you can see why people go the way of the world. It's not always just for <clears throat> it's not always just for success and for power and position. Sometimes it's just to stop getting kicked. You know? Stop kicking me while I'm down. Okay, you stop kicking me and I'll join your club. You know that's there too. Hey, that's there too. Listen, for the follower of Christ, what we've done is we're just on the way out. Our thing was, Jesus called, we answered, God quickened in us just like he did in Peter. When God asked Peter, who do men say that I am? And he gave him all the answers. He said, okay, who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed the Son to you. But my Father who is in heaven has revealed the Son to you. You know, upon this huge understanding, this revelation, this foundation of who I am, I'm going to build my church. And that revelation is the foundation inside of the heart of every child of the living God. Upon this rock of who Christ Jesus is. And He is the rock. He is the cornerstone. Upon it, we're built. And when Jesus called, we answered, went forward, that's it, done, good, next. Okay, Lord, what do you want us to do? Because we only see, we only, we only speak the words we hear from the Father. We only do the things we see the Father doing. Good enough. Good enough. Lord, you want me to clean the bathroom? Good enough. Lord, you want me to fix the whole world and the whole world system? And establish your kingdom in Jesus' name? Okay. Good enough. You say, you 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 quicken, you respond, you tell us, Lord, and we'll do, because we are the extension of your kingdom. In fact, we are projections from where we already sit in heavenly places. We have physical manifestations in this realm of an eternal reality, an eternal construct. We are right now ever present all of time is happening all the time we just see a glimpse a part through a glass darkly but that's even being cleared up as we're transitioning from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God so as we are transitioning as we're moving as things are shaking as things are, are transitioning trust brothers and sisters Trust the way that God works with you. And pray. When God gives you something to pray about, pray because you know why? You are the only thing. You are the only thing in this world that has the power to war against all that's coming up in this time. Because it is you and the power of prayer and the power of what God has put in you. The right that God has given you as his son, as his daughter. It is that, when you exercise that, that's the only thing that's going to make a difference. Because other than that, there is no recourse. Because as the world has been revealed, as it's been unmasked, you start to see, right? You get it. That there is, um, on the lower levels of the world, on the lower rungs of the ladder of the world, they, boy, they'll, they'll, they chew their people up. But once they get up to a certain level... Once they climb up a little bit high enough, they're above the law. There is no law. They make things go away. They make people go away. They make cases go away. They make evidence disappear. And they exist inside of their clubs that do some of the worst, most heinous things. All of that is there. All of that is part and parcel of, of what this world is, is. And when God puts us in this place, you start to realize, okay, that is is the nature of this place. And that is what we have to contend with while we're here. That's what we have to deal with while we're here. So now, as we've realized the way the world works, which is a power grab, which is 
to control the human consciousness. Oh, and they've got to do that too, by the way. They cannot have you ignore that. Ignoring the world and the world system is not... They can't, they can't tolerate that. Because there is an economy of attention, if you would. Whatever you give your attention to is what grows. Whatever it is that you put your focus on is what is going to take on life. So they want you to give your focus, give your attention, give your thoughts to them. Because by doing that, it gives them power. <clears throat> Listen, is there a celebrity that would be a celebrity if nobody thought about them? Of course not. They need you to think about them. They need you to look at them. They need you to follow them. They need you to be participating in whatever it is that they're doing. And the degree to which they have your attention is the degree to which they are a celebrity. So you get all these people running around trying to get people's attention. Because they want to be somebody. And that's what's so funny in the day and the age that we live right now is that you know, if you don't want people's attention, all of a sudden they all want to follow you. If you want to be left alone and just live in peace, that seems to be something that they don't want either. The more that you want to live in peace, it seems like, and just be left alone, the more it seems like that they want to know what you're doing. And everybody's curious, because why wouldn't you want the attention, the adoration, the um, engagement and the involvement of everybody possible in your world? Well, because for one, I don't need that for power. I don't need the power that comes from limitation. Because when Jesus Christ gave us the new life in Him, He said, out of your bellies will flow rivers of living water. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So there... We got power. We got greater power than the attention economy. But that's the way the world works. You've got to understand that that's part of their thing. And so because that's part of their thing, the way that they're going to keep their stuff going, they've got to have you engaged. They have to have you involved. They have to have you looking at it. They need to. They need your attention. Okay? Social media giant Facebook. What would happen if people for a week just didn't use it? For one week, didn't use it. The entire thing would collapse. Because it requires that you use it. You need to use it in order for it to work. If you don't use it, and if it doesn't have your attention, they're stuck. Completely stuck. So just recognize that. you got to recognize that. Because that's part of it as well. <clears throat> Now, this is why, too, that principle that God gave us of being aware but not distracted is extremely powerful. Because when you're aware but not distracted, that means that nothing from the world holds your attention. Okay? Nothing from the world holds your attention. Something from the world might, for a moment, in a passing moment, get your attention. So you're aware... But you constantly are refocusing on Christ Jesus. And that's the difference. When you're aware but not distracted, you you be aware, those things will pop up, but your mind will always go back to Christ. Your mind will always go back to the things of God. You will always set your mind on things above. You'll always focus on whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is just. But you're gonna that you're gonna think about those things, right? That's where your mind's gonna be, and you're going to not let these things get a hold on you. <clears throat> so that's also part of of why the enemy works hard to also um, get certain things tied into your flesh, tied into your mind, tied onto your body, tied onto things that you will wear, you know, so all these brands, you know, what is the brand? 
the brand's there so that you know. You know, you, it's, the brand's got your attention, so you can see it every day. Every day, you walk past that thing, you wear that thing, the brand's got your attention. It's got to keep it. It's got to keep it involved. It's got to keep you involved. <clears throat> what happens when you exit? When you exit? Ah, uh, just try it. <laughs> It's fun. It's fun. Just try it. Just say, you know what? This is the way I've been doing it, and I'm going to change it now. Uh, I'm going to have a whole different set of uh, interests for a little while. I'm going to put my thoughts and my attention into something else. Lord God, where do you want me to put my thought my attention? Where do you want me to learn? Where do you want me to spend time? Who would you want me to spend time around? What do you want me to do? When we only do what we see the Father doing, Things change. When we only speak the words that we hear from the Father, things change. I tell you what, stuff is moving pretty fast right now. And as that's the case, <clears throat> if you're not in step with God, whatever you do is just going to be just wasted so fast. Because anything apart from Him doesn't last. Everything that's done apart from Him perishes. But when you are separate <clears throat> from Him in this kind of a time, all the more, it's just going to just go so fast. But when you do things that are being led by the Spirit of God, it lasts. It's eternal. And this is a great time, great time to be doing things that are eternal and doing things that are in line with the Spirit of God and doing things that are in step with the quickening of of what God would have for His people to be doing right now. But you got to listen to Him. You can't do it in yourself. You can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it in your own mind. You can't do it in your own human thinking, your own human understanding. You can't. So, in this time, being led is important. And, and that process of just quieting yourself you, know, you can remain in the state of prayer all day. It doesn't just have to be that quiet time that's cut aside. You can stay in a state of prayer throughout and be listening to the voice and the Spirit of God. You can be in a state where the Spirit just flows through you. You can be writing things. You can be singing. You can be um, just whatever it is you're doing. I mean, right now, I'm driving. <laughs> I'm driving a car and I'm, I'm letting God flow through me to give you this word. You can always, always, always be in step and contribute and do the thing that God gives us to do. Why not? You know, there is no limitation for us, brothers and sisters in Christ. There is no limitation. There is God's promise, God's plan, God's intention for us, and that's what we want to live in and move in and trust Ah, amazing, amazing. <clears throat> it's an amazing time. You know, looking at all of this right now, I mean, I mean, you know this whole thing's not real, right? You know that this world is transitional. It, when you know that and when you understand that, it's got to change the way that you behave while you're here. It's got to change the perspective. It's got to change how you view what happens to you here. You know, this is, this is, we weren't meant to, to stay here. We were meant to experience, do certain things, um, trust God, be quickened by His Spirit, walk with Him for the fullness of your days here, and carry on. You don't want to get stuck in the video game. And there's nothing here worth that. <clears throat> so, 
Ah, yeah, no, it's and it's been a lot, you guys. It has been a lot for those of you that have been on the journey, and those of you that have been walking and doing the things that God's given you to do and trusting Him. It's been a lot. You've, you've done an incredible work. Just continue on. To him who overcomes, God has given that instruction again and again. To him who overcomes. We've got to overcome. And, you know, the way that we do that, just listen. You don't have to, you don't have to get everything done all at once, all right? Just do that thing that's in front of you right now. Trust him right now. You know, those little, little, little things that you do in connection with the Spirit of God, they add up. They add up to something big in your own life. They add up to something big in eternity. They add up to something big in the way of the kingdom and what God is doing right now. But it's the culmination of those. Sometimes it's, it's, you know, it's just something so small and so subtle that can have such a massive impact, especially when you do it consistently and under the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. If you do something under the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit, God will be in that. Case in point, and something that's been very public, has been 20 on 20. You know, in the natural, that wouldn't seem like much. To meet up with some friends and pray for 20 minutes once a month. But in the realm of the Spirit, in connection with what God's doing according to His plan and purpose it's that I mean yeah if you don't know go back and check the record and look at what was going on before and after um, the very world that we're in has changed and that was part of what God was having to be done during that to usher in that change, to be linked with that change, to pray through that change, to move in concert with what the Spirit of God was doing for that change. Incredible. And incredible that God calls His people to live like that, to be like that. Be bold in who you are in Christ. You don't have to... Listen, you're second to no one. Okay? You are second to no one. The world and the earth and all that it is has nothing on you. Now, they they are going to try to make things difficult and they are going to challenge and there's going to be a lot of other stuff that comes up. But the world's got nothing on you. You surrender yourself to the Spirit of the living God. Let Him lead and guide and direct you. Let the rest be what it is. God's going to direct you. He's going to take care of you. He's bringing you, bringing you out and bringing you through. The process can be challenging and difficult at times. No one will, will doubt that. No one will argue with that. But if you trust, and if you hold on, and if you overcome, and you overcome by walking with Christ, you overcome by letting Him lead you and guide you, you overcome by reading and, and listening to and doing the Word. Don't just be a hearer of the Word. Do the Word. God shows you something, do it. And turn yourself over to His Holy Spirit. So if you lack or if you don't know, He'll give you the power so that you do. <clears throat> and you can act on it. You can move forward on it. God is... is He's going to take care of His people. He is taking care of His people. Have you ever, have you ever not had the promises of God? When you started walking with Him, have you ever not seen the promises of God real in your life? Yes or no? And right now, in this moment, as you're hearing my voice, what are you lacking right now? What is missing? In Christ Jesus, you have everything. And as you pray, whatever is a challenge or a struggle, He'll intervene in that too. Sometimes He'll take care of the need. Sometimes He'll just show you a different way to relate to the issue. A different way to relate to the problem. There is a difference. 
you know, sometimes our thing is if there's a problem or an issue, if we've got a need, we just want that thing taken care of. But there's other times where God is allowing for something because he's trying to build something in us. And it's necessary to get our attention. Do we like that? No. But how else are things going to be burned out of us? How else are things going to be exposed that need to be dealt with? How else? Unless God does that in us. And he allows for the circumstances and the situations of life to reveal, to expose, so that things can be pulled out and rooted out of us. So that we can walk clean. So that we can be what God intended us to be. Oh, I tell you, it's all good in Christ Jesus. It's all good in Christ Jesus. Don't worry. Don't be perplexed. You know, men's hearts will fail them when they see the things coming upon the earth. That's what Jesus already told us. You know, that that's going to be, hey, that is the times, all right? And if, you, if, you've, if you've not seen people starting to fall apart now, wait a little bit. Wait a little bit. People are going to go all over the place. But the child of God has the answer. The child of God has the solution. It's Christ Jesus. You've walked with him. You know that voice. You know that solution. So now is an incredible time for us. Because there's a lot of things that God's been wanting to do in you. Now's the time for it. You've been waiting patiently. Now's the time. All right? Before wasn't the time. Now is the time. Before things weren't ready, now things are ready. Before um, we, it wasn't the space where God wanted to move. Now it is. For everything under heaven uh, that happens on the earth, there's a time and there is a season. Sometimes there are times of just patience and grace. Other times are times of wrath and judgment or blessing and hope building, planting, everything's got a time, as Ecclesiastes would say. And everything has a time and a season. And this is the season that God is wanting, in concert with the exercising of your free will, to flow through you in incredible ways and do things that would blow the minds of anybody that's watching When God did certain things with Moses and Pharaoh, with Moses in that time, that was mind-blowing. 80 years up until then was not so mind-blowing. Then that was. So, experiences, the reality, the timing, the role, the responsibility, all that God has for you. God's got you coming into this time. There's so much that He has in store for you, so much that He plans for you. You've got to look at it. you got to know. You've got to trust Him. you got to move forward in the things that God has for you to do. Because this is your time. Alright, hey, we love you guys. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. We always love to hear from you. Um, keep praying. Keep trusting, keep reading, keep looking to the Father to lead and guide you and to show you what He would have for you to do. He that began a good work in you is going to carry it on to completion. We love you guys. God bless you. We'll talk to you again sometime really soon. God bless you. Bye.